Hi, my name is Patrick Luck. I am a Java tutor here at Chegg Tutors, and today's lesson I want to tell you how, share with you how we programmers see the world. You can kind of think of it like this. Biologists might see cells. Chemists might see molecules. An architect might see Look at a landscape and see what could be built on that landscape that would look pleasing to the eye. And we programmers have to look at our world. And to be honest, this is really one of the more fun and satisfying parts of uh, being a developer, especially if you ever choose to make your career out of developing. Uh, modeling software is, um, is something I particularly enjoy. And I believe uh, a lot of my colleagues and people I work with enjoy it as well. And it, it gets really interesting sometimes because, like, for example, let's say you are walking to the train station, and to the average person, you might see some passengers here who, you know, look like people and not stick figures. You might see the platform, you might see the trains, you may hear the speaker saying, doors opening, step back and allow customers to enter. Beam, 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 step back, doors closing. You might hear the operator say, next stop, and then you see the train move, and then stops at the next platform, and you get off, and you pay your train fee, for example. Okay, a lot going on here. And it might be surprising that in a lot of cases, when you are a programmer, more often than not, you are describing what you see in your real world. So let's say, you know, for example, you're doing a program that do that tracks where these trains are. For example, you're going to want to know how many trains are at the station, which ones are down for repair, which ones are in use. You certainly want to make sure that uh, trains are running on the right track so they don't collide with each other. I mean, you know, bad software can have very real-world consequences. And so as a programmer, we really need to think about how we see the world. And that's what I'm going to share with you tonight. So, for example, in this one, okay, let's start here. We got, really, a metro station. So as a programmer, that would tell me something we might have class. Metro station. And what do we what are some things we know? If we flip back over to our metro station, we know that our metro station can have one train docked at a time. So we might have, for example, train current train. But train right away tells me there's another class, class train. You know, I don't know anything about this yet. So we'll fill that in, but right now I know that there is a train at this metro station. But is there? We take a look back at our whiteboard. Our train can leave. So we might, for example, want to have a method dispatch train, which tells the train to, and actually, take this step further, we might call it train.leaveStation. So we now know, for example, our train can leave the station, so we probably want to put that in there. Okay, so, you know, we know that if our, once our train leaves the station, What she's going to do right now well we don't actually have any train at our station yet and our passengers probably want to know when the next train arrives so we might have private and this is a property of metro station that would tell me when the next train train um, is arriving. We probably want to know if the metro station has a train. 
because we certainly don't want a train to arrive in the metro station while there's a train there. I mean, brother, it would crash if we did that. So we definitely want to keep track of whether or not the train, there is a train there or not. What do we know about the passengers? Like, for example, we might, we know that there's some passengers, so, you know, probably is a fair say that at the very least we might have We might want to know how many people are there at the train. You know, do we want to know, for example, um, are there no people because the train station is closed? Are there a lot of people? And actually, speaking of train station closed, that could be another thing. You know, so there you go again. And you can see, this is how a programmer really looks at the world here. We don't look at, we actually do look at objects in our world and then we ask ourselves, okay, what is the object one? So what are we dealing with? What does the object do? And then we ask, for example, how does the object interact with other objects. Like for example, we have these passengers. Well, if no train's coming anytime soon, our passengers might want to call a taxi. So, hey, you know, class pass. And this is a behavior, call taxi. He's calling a taxi because he can't get a train right now, but what if the train is in the station? Maybe the passenger wants to board the train. And this is an example of the passenger interacting with the train because he's getting on board a specific train. Likewise, train might want to tell all passengers to leave by signaling emergency. So this is an example of an interaction here between the passengers and the train. So these are just a very, very few examples of how programmers see the world. But basically, we're always looking at our real world and we're asking ourselves, how do we model it in software? What are we dealing with? What does it do? And how does it interact with other objects in its domain model? So this can be true of a train station. This can be true of a banking. This can be true of scientific research, but it always comes down to the fact that as programmers, we need to see our real world and then we need to develop models of that real world into software. And then that's what we use as the building blocks to power the applications that we use every day from our smartphones to our online banking applications to technology that hasn't even been invented yet. It really does take a unique way of looking at the world when you're a professional programmer. My name is Patrick Luck from Chegg's Hooters. I hope you enjoyed tonight's lesson. And uh, come check back. There will be plenty more. Good night.